Hi guys, I'm Darren, and in this video, we're gonna be talking about using different units in iNav. So about a week ago, there was a post in the iNav Fixwing group about how the developers should really look after people from other countries because not everyone's from Europe and not everyone understands centimeters. This post may have seemed a little bit abrupt, but I'm sure that the person who wrote it didn't mean that at all. But what it did for me was highlight the fact that this feature that was obviously asked for in the post has been in iNav for a little while now, but obviously there are people that just don't know about it. So I thought it's a great thing to make a video about. So I should also point out, I've got a little bit of a cold going on. So if I get a bit croaky or husky, sorry about that. So what I thought I would do is look at the different areas in iNav where we can actually change our units. So before getting started with this, I don't want to get into debates about what units are best or anything like that. There's plenty of that on Facebook. And to be honest, most of it's a bit of a joke, but obviously there's two ways of looking at this. There's what is the best units for you know, just actual calculation, scientific stuff, which of course metric wins that hands down. It's base 10, the different units can interact with each other. So for example, one liter of water weighs a kilogram. So th yeah, there's a lot of good reason to use metric, but that doesn't mean that it's the best units for everybody. The best units for you or I are the units that we're used to using. So even though I know that working in metric is better, my aircraft is actually set to UK because that's what I'm used to seeing when I'm driving about. I have a better idea of distances and speeds based on those units. And it's not about what's better and what's not. It's about what you're used to. Let's jump into iNav Configurator and have a look at some of these different units. So since the dawn of iNav, we have been able to set units in the OSD. So on the OSD page here, you can see we have a unit drop-down list. Now, originally there were three units. There was metric, imperial, or what was then called UK. It realistically wasn't actually units that we use in the UK. So on the OSDs page, you would just go to this box, drop down, and then you could click what you wanted to use. Now you can see there are actually five types here. In iNav 4.0, we introduced more types. So what's UK here is not the UK of old. The old, what was called UK, was actually just metric with miles per hour for speed. And that's not really how we work here. For distances, if we're driving, we're using miles, we're not using kilometers. So it wasn't really a proper UK unit set. So the UK unit set is imperial with uh, temperature in Celsius. But because people liked that setting, it's obviously we need to keep it. So there is a metric plus miles per hour. So everything is in metric apart from speed, which is miles per hour. The last one that was added was general aviation. And if I click that, you'll see that we have things in knots. We have 100 feet per minute for uh, the variometer. We have nautical miles for the distance. So this is more for general aviation. So those are the units that we can actually see in our goals as we're flying. And we can appreciate the distances we've traveled, the speed we've gone based on the units that we like to use or are used to using. But that's only the firmware. The bigger issue comes when you want to edit things. Now, this is the advanced tuning page in iNav for fixed wings. And you can see here we have very small units. So we have uh, milliseconds. We have yeah, microseconds we're used to anyway, because that's the transmitter stuff. But for distances, we have centimeters. As far as flying things goes, we, we have small units of measurement. And this is because this is what the firmware is actually using. So this is how iNav would have looked before version 4.0. This is all the firmware's units. And if we've been using iNav for a long time, you sort of probably got used to this, but someone new or someone who just doesn't understand these types of units would obviously want to work in something different. So in iNav 4.0, the option to use different units has been added to Configurator. So iNav 4.0 came out on the 18th of December, 2021. So it's almost a year old now. And this feature has obviously been in there for that long. And over the, the versions that have preceded it, it has improved too. So how do we change the units in Configurator so we're not dealing with centimeters? Even if you use metric, 
you know, using centimeters for your altitude and stuff is a bit of a pain. It would be much better to use meters. So what you do is you click on this gear icon at the top, which says application options. And in here, you can see configurator rendering options. In that section, you have how the units render on the configurator. In here, we have three options. Now at the bottom, we have metric and then we have imperial. And what these will do is set the configurator to use those unit types. So if I click on metric, when this page refreshes, we will have seconds for time. Some are kept small. Motor delay is something where we are using smaller periods of time. So that's kept small, but sort of stuff like minimum launch is now seconds. Um, but you can see we have maximum altitude is in meters and we have speed in kilometers per hour. And also you notice that if you're not sure on what the unit is just by the abbreviation, if you hover the mouse over, it will actually tell you yeah, a proper full word of what the unit is because yeah, MS could be maybe meters per second or it could be milliseconds. In this case, it's obviously milliseconds. But if you're unsure, you can hover over the unit and it will tell you what it is. So that is the metric alternative. Actually, there's meters per second there, so it is slightly different, but hovering over will give you exactly what it is. But anyway, yeah, there we have an example of metric working. If we went to Imperial, it would do the same, but using Imperial units. So we have feet for altitude, we have miles per hour for speed. If there was temperature in here, it would be in Fahrenheit as opposed to centigrade. So that leaves one other option. Now, if we go back to the OSD, at the moment you can see we're on Imperial, but if I change this to general aviation and save it, what I'll do is I'll pop back into the advanced tuning page. Remember, we're currently using Imperial units, so we have miles per hour for speed. What the OSD setting actually does is uses the units that you have selected for the OSD. So it could be confusing if you have different units on different flight controllers, but I don't think that's going to really be the case. So if we click on OSD now, what we will have in configurator is the general aviation units. So we have knots for cruise speed. We have 100 feet per minute for climb rates. Um, so it is all set to the units that you like to use. Of course, one of the things people love to scream out at people when they have something that's easy to answer is RTFM. I'm not gonna say on the channel what it is, but most of you probably know. But the problem is with Configurator, the manual is actually pretty much non-existent at the moment. It is something that's being worked on and actually the post prompted me to actually write a manual part for that page. So the manual is coming, but it is gonna take a while um, unless other people join in and help. But you can see, if we go to the iNav Flight Configurator, uh, GitHub and the Wiki section, there is now a configuration settings um, manual page. And at the bottom, we have changing units that just ex explains what I've just explained in the video, basically. So now you can RTFM. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I know that the manual for configurator isn't great, but it is something that is a work in progress, but will take time, unfortunately. But I just wanted to let you know that that does exist and maybe in a if you're watching this video in a year or two's time, there'll be more in, well, hopefully there'll be a lot more in there by now. So that's just a small example of how you can actually get configurator and the firmware working in units that you understand and are comfortable working with. So if you hadn't known about this feature before, I hope this video really helps you out and you can enjoy using iNav even more now. So thank you very much for watching guys. See you on the next one. Fly models like you stole them and See ya.